It was a Saturday evening when I went to the grocery store to pick up something fresh for dinner. My girl was waiting at home, and I told her I was going to cook something so good she'd have no other choice but to take back what she said about my homemade mac and cheese a couple of weeks ago. I like to use American cheese in it, but apparently that's like a huge insult to pasta. Anyway, like my mom always said, if you want to impress someone in the kitchen, you have to use the finest cut of meat you can find. And so I went to the usual grocery stores, but they didn't really have anything that appealed to me. And that's when I remembered our own very local grocery store about two streets up from where I live. It's a small thing, you know. It's called the Esposito Market, and a Taiwanese guy and his wife own it. Lovely couple, by the way. She runs the register, and he's the guy who does everything else. Needless to say, with so little employees, the place is not exactly A1 in terms of cleanliness and product rotation. But still, I grew up in this neighborhood, and when my mom wanted to impress, she always came here for me. She said they had an amazing, unique product that no one else had such as horse meat and freshwater fish, so fresh, it felt like they were caught in the morning. And since my mom was the greatest cook I knew, I trusted this place would have just the right thing for me. I went in, and I admit, my first impression wasn't great. There was a weird smell when you passed the front door, something akin to rotting vegetables and stale air. And I tried not to pay much attention to it, and fortunately, after a couple of minutes, I think my nose got used to it. I stopped smelling it, basically. I remember trying to look for the source of that smell, but the racks of vegetables lining up before me seemed relatively fresh. There wasn't any mold growing on the veggies, or any that looked in particularly bad state. I didn't need anything but meat anyway, so I made my way back to the store where the fresh fish and finest meat I would ever find were supposed to be. I was disappointed. The horse meat didn't look as appetizing as when my mom prepared it for me, and the boar didn't titillate my hunger as much as I would have hoped it would have. I remembered my mother once prepared me some delicious emu meat too, but... Maybe it was out of season. Not that I particularly like eating emu, but it would have been an original meal. Boar and horses are a little less rare, and I wanted to impress her with something she'd never tasted before. Quickly, I tried to remember the few very original recipes of my mother. As I stood there with my eyes locked on the meat display, the owner came from the back store. He was wiping his hands clean and gave me a quick look before approaching the counter. He asked me if I needed help, but it was obvious he didn't speak English all that often. Without thinking, I simply said, I'm looking for an exclusive cut. And he stared at me blankly for a few seconds and then asked my mother's name. I told him and he seemed to relax before gesturing for me to follow him. I wasn't sure why he wanted me to follow him, but whatever. Maybe he had some fresh meat in the back room, something like, I don't know, turkey meat or something illegal like elephant. I don't know. Why not, you know? I wasn't going to call them out on it. My mama would never forgive me if I took away her best butcher in town. Besides, she must have known about it since just saying her name was getting me to see this crappy corner grocery store back store. Well, after I crossed the revolving double doors, I realized the back store was even smaller than I thought. If I had judged from the size of the place, I would have believed it to be bigger, much bigger. I don't know, but maybe the front was bigger than I thought. There wasn't much in there either. A lot of shelves and products sitting and waiting to be placed in the front, or returned in some cases. 
I was about to open my mouth and remind him that I was here looking for meat when he took a sharp turn left between two rows of canned products. He revealed a trap door on the floor by pushing away an industrial mop kit, and suddenly I felt like I needed not to be there. Like at all. I needed to pretend I was sick and thought soup would be better for dinner. In fact, my every instinct was telling me that I'd fucked up something bad and that this was time for me to leave. But I didn't say anything, and let him lead me into the basement of this grocery store. I mean, after all, when the hell do you ever see something like this? When the trap was opened, the first thing I noticed was the chilly breeze coming from the basement. A cold storage in the basement. It's not a bad idea, but why was it so well hidden? And I didn't like where this was going. I certainly hoped I wouldn't get myself entangled in something too illegal. I mean, I'm okay if they serve shark fins and stuff like that. <laughs> After all, I did say elephant, right? But what if? And you can't pretend these kinds of thoughts won't assault you when you're in a crappy local grocery store. And the owner suddenly leads you to a very well-hidden staircase in his back room. My mouth went dry as I descended the stairs, but I was reassured to hear a couple of voices. Down there was an almost perfect replica of the upper floor when it comes to the butchery and the fish shop. There were counters full of meat and fresh fish swimming in tanks. Some I wouldn't even be able to identify. Maybe except a puffer fish or something like that. Now I know these aren't really legal to sell in a grocery store, since they are incredibly poisonous and when cooked wrong, it's about a 99% chance it will die. Or 92%, I'm not sure. I read an article about it once though. So yeah, some illegal stuff, but nothing to really raise the hair on my scalp still. I was kind of relieved. The meat counter looked exactly like you'd expect a place like that to look like. Fresh meat was displayed on ice with little labels to describe them. There was a lot of prohibited species there too, and I was surprised to read some of them, until the owner tugged my shirt at the shoulder and nodded at me to follow him. Apparently, that wasn't the exclusive cuts he wanted me to see. And that's when he asked me, if I was here to pick up something for my mother because she had her own personal stash there. He gave me a smile that sent a chill down my spine, but I tried to blame the fact that I was standing in an ice-cold, frigid room. I told him that I was here for me, and that she hadn't sent me there. That I just remember she told me that they had an amazing, unique cuts, and that I wanted to cook to impress. I think that's when the owner realized that he messed up. I saw his smile faltering for a second, and then come back, and at the same time something shifted in his gaze. It was like I was placed in front of a very different person, and I felt the breath knocked out as he gently put his hand on my back and said he had something to show me. Now my mother was a very, very loyal customer of his, he whispered in that broken English again, something about me being lucky to have such a good mother. But I didn't feel it so bad that I even turned around and asked if they had emu meat. I would be more happy to leave with that because, well, that's the kind of thing I was looking for to begin with. Something wild, I suppose. But the two guys behind the counter were staring at me very intently as the owner grabbed my arm more firmly than necessary. He told me, No, no. Can't leave so soon. I haven't showed everything. Your mother's stash. And I swallowed thickly. I swallowed thickly not because I felt like I was about to discover something gruesome about my mother, but because I felt like I was not going to be able to leave this cold storage. The owner gently encouraged me into another room and lit it up for me. 
At that moment, my heart stopped beating. My eyes widened and my jaw fell agape. Hanging from the ceiling was a strange creature that I can only describe as a horrific mix of human and pig. It wasn't facing me, but it had the backside of a human, outside of that pigtail at the bottom of its spine. Its skin was the pinkest hue I'd seen on a human, but it had human hair on its head. Both of the creature's hands were tied up to a hook hanging from the ceiling, and much to my horror, I heard it breathe. Not normal breathing either. It was raspy and wheezy. It even had a texture. If I could describe the sound of this creature's breathing, it would be like bubbling oil in the back of a throat. It slowly dangled on itself to face me, and I reached a hand to my mouth to stop the flow of vomit that was about to cross my lips. Its eyes were bulbous and black, slightly pushed out of the creature's skull. I could see pig ears amidst that curly black hair. Its nose was more of that of a bat than pig or human. Its lips were black and swollen, and there was a thick red dribble coming from the corner of its lips, rolling down its chin. I supposed it was blood. It dripped into the creature's chest as well where six swollen and darkened nipples hung loosely like a cow's udders. I didn't know what the hell I was looking at. But when I finally took in the full sight of this abomination, I turned around, ready to push my way out. Only I wasn't leaving. One of the men behind the counter was back and hit me in the head with something. When I woke up, I was dangling next to this godless creature who had stopped breathing. I tried to think of how such a thing could exist, but I can only think about some weird ass experiment gone wrong. Unfortunately, I had to get out of there, so I didn't really have time to think about the what and why that were behind the beast next to me. I started screaming, but I knew my chances of being heard were thin. Between the concrete floor over my head and the sound of the refrigeration to keep this room cold, I heavily doubted the upper floor could hear me. I didn't even know how long I was out, and there were no windows either where I was locked. Only this creepy, dangly swine and me. I swallowed heavily and quickly realized I'd been stripped naked. The cold was already biting at my skin, and I could feel the disgusting texture of my blood caked on the side of my face and neck. I tried to wiggle and squirm to free myself from the hook to no avail, and I needed to do something radical if I wanted to free myself. And as I was debating breaking my thumb to pass my hand through the restraints, I heard the door open. The owner's wife entered and I instantly started to plea for my life. But she was only checking the vitals of the pig man next to me. I screamed at her to release me, but she slapped my foot and said, No speaking. With the same shitty broken English as her husband. After that, she prepared a syringe and I tried to kick her away because, well, fuck if I was letting her drug me. Now I managed to kick her hand and the syringe broke on the floor. She stared at me blankly and got out of the room. A couple minutes later, the two goons I'd seen earlier were back. One of them walked around me and grabbed my legs from behind so the woman could fill another syringe and drug me. The last image I had in my mind was that of the swine next to me being unhooked. I don't know what happened in the next few days either. It was all about me waking up, being restrained and shot with that weird needle thing and back to passing out again. I think I got sick too. I remember the smell of cleaning products in between my waking and being forced to sleep again. I could still feel my arms though, which means at some point they probably let me down. That was the thin hope I held on to. 
and so I stopped struggling when the lady came in every day and shot me with whatever it was in that vial. I don't know how many more days passed after that. All I know is that I was hungry. Very hungry. I'm sure they had fed me through a tube during my sleep, because I didn't feel thirsty or like I was dying. But I felt like something was changing about me, and I feared the worse. I had to do something. The lady now came alone, probably thinking I'd given up since I stopped struggling. It was now or never, and I managed to put my hands together despite the thick restraints and grab the thumb on my left hand. I counted to ten because, well, I'm a coward. And then I snapped my thumb in half. Thankfully, the drugs running through my system numbed a bit of that pain. Tears still fell from my eyes, but now I knew I could free that one hand if I wanted. But I needed to be cautious because of the two guys behind the door. When the lady came, I waited until her syringe was full and she was about to stab me with it. As she focused on a vein on my thigh, I unhooked my hand and fell to the ground. She instantly screamed something in her native language, and I kicked her leg under her. She fell and I grabbed the needle from her hand and stabbed her neck with it, making sure she got a healthy dose of her own medicine. I waited to see if the two guys would come, but no one did. I checked her body to see if there was a weapon I could use, but outside of a set of keys, a few vials, and syringes, she had nothing on her. I grabbed the keys, filled two syringes, and prayed for the best. I also stole her apron because I was still butt naked. My muscles ached and complained, especially my arms. I didn't feel like I could control them well at this point especially since I'd been dangling for a while. I opened the door and checked, but the two guys weren't behind the counter, and since I didn't know what day or what time it was, it was possible that we were in the middle of the night and they weren't even working. My heart tightened in my chest when I saw the shovel next to the door. I grabbed it. I discarded the syringes and I advanced into the cold room hoping to find a staircase. My memory was blurry, but I knew this place wasn't big enough for me to get lost. I could hear voices, and the closer I got to the meat counter, the clearer the voices. And that's when I found the staircase. The trap door was open too, and I distinctly heard the owner's voice as well as another voice, which had my stomach turning. I couldn't make out what they were saying because it was in a man's tongue, but that woman's voice, well, that was my mother. I held the shovel tightly and started climbing the stairs. Once I was in the grocery store back room again, my eyes instinctively went to my mother, who was standing about ten feet away from the trap door, casually chatting with the owner. When she saw me, her eyes widened and she screamed. The owner's face drained of color, and when my mother finally realized what had happened, she got a pepper spray out of her purse and shot him in the face until the can was empty. The man fell to the ground coughing, and my mother grabbed the first thing she saw, which was one of those one-pound cans of tomato sauce, and she slammed it against his head repeatedly. I heard him gurgle and cough between each hit until he finally stopped moving and there was a hole the size of Texas on the back of his head. I couldn't move. I couldn't let go of the shovel. And my mother came closer and cradled me and I closed my eyes. I told the police I was the one who beat up the owner and drugged the wife after they kept me in the basement. I didn't talk about the drugs they gave me and refused the medical exam, saying that they didn't touch me. Just kept me there because I saw something illegal. They arrested the wife, and the illegal fish and meat found in the basement was enough to support my explanation. I ended things with my girlfriend, too. Some things about my body had changed. 
My ears, namely, had started to twist downward like pig ears. And there were new things on my chest I didn't feel like explaining to her. Were the fact that my spine had gotten longer and that I was starting to form what looked like a tail. Nothing much, just a centimeter. But if I'd stayed in this basement a couple more weeks, well, the grocery store closed and my mother bought it with some spare money she made over the years. She put me in charge. <laughs>